Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a daily digital to-do list directly in Procreate. Say that 10 times fast. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. The color palette and all the brushes we're using for this, we're using three different brushes. Everything's free. So just tap on the link in the video description and you can have access to everything. This week's tutorial is brought to you by Envato Elements, the Netflix of graphic design. Envato Elements is packed with thousands thousands of creative resources, making any project quicker and more professional. My favorite is their Procreate brush section, where you can download and install beautiful brushes and design elements in a snap. They've even generously provided every Tuesday viewers with a, ready for this, 70% off coupon, so you can try it out for less than $10 a month. It's limited time though, so be sure to hit the link in the video description and grab that insanely valuable coupon and go on your own downloading spree. So I'm going to create a brand new canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. I do work in the display P3 color profile, but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to that, then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine. Okay, I've got my brand new canvas ready to go. We're going to drop in our background color first, which is a really dark navy color. It's almost black, so I'm going to come to my layers, tap on background color, and it's the very first color right here. And now we've got our background color. We're going to apply a grid to start out with. That way it'll be really easy to create our to-do list paper. So I'm going to come to my wrench, hit canvas, turn on drawing guide, hit edit drawing guide, and I'm going to make sure that it's a lighter color so we can all see it really Really well so come over here and I can choose white that way and I'm going to make this really thick so you can see it and really opaque so we'll be able to see it super well on screen and the grid size that I'm going to work with is 50 so you can just type in 50 hit done and hit done all right we've got our grid all set to go this first layer we're going to rename it paper we're going to grab our lightest color, so it's the first one on the second row, we're going to grab our selection tool and make sure rectangle is selected down here. And we're going to draw out a rectangle. I like this size of it. And I'm going to fill it with color and then I'll let you know the dimensions of it. The size of my paper, I've got three squares down from the top. I've got four squares up from the bottom and I've got 14 squares as the width of it. So this is important because we need to drop in our little circles up here where it's going to be tied. And in order to pop those circles on, we're going to use layer masking. So we're going to tap in the layer thumbnail and choose mask. I'm going to change the color to black. I, since this is a little more advanced, I'm going to skip explaining what layer masking is, but I'll leave a link on screen to one of my tutorials all about layer masking. I also have a new free course called Procreate 5X for Beginners, and there's an entire section on layer masking. So if you wanna know the ins and outs of it, definitely encourage you to check it out. It's entirely free. So I'm going to select black for this. I'm going to grab my mono weight brush and the size of my brush is 25%. So now we're going to do the little hole punches on our paper. And the middle of this is where I have seven squares in the line that meets right in the middle. So seven squares in is this line right here. So from this line, I'm going to come over to one, two, and where that meets right there. I'm going to just tap once and put a circle and I'm going to do the same thing over here. So that's my center line, one, two, and then pop a circle. And now I've got my little hole punches. Now we're going to design our paper. So all the graphics that are on it because it'll help us to align everything really well and then we can turn it later on. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it. And we're going to have a headline in an area. We're going to have a line that says today's date. And then we're going to have all of our check boxes down. So we're going to start with a headline first. I'm going to grab my darkest color, which is the same as the background color. So it's the first one. I'm going to grab my signature brush. So the three Three brushes that we're using for this are the mono weight brush, the signature brush, and the dotted brush. This entire starter pack brush set is totally free. It comes with my free course, the Procreate 5X for Beginners. But if you don't want to take the course, then you can download each one of these individually from my resource library, which there's a link to right in the video description. So for my signature brush, I'm going to letter this out. You can use typable text if you'd rather do that instead of lettering. And let me label this one lettering. And I'm just going to write out, make it happen, but you can write out any phrase you'd like. Okay, I'm going to rotate this a little bit. I drew it at more of an angle than I wanted to. 
So that feels a little bit better. Let me center this up. So now I'm going to draw some doodles around it. Also very optional. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. Just label this one doodles. And I'm going to keep my signature brush for this. It's got a little bit of pressure sensitivity so I can change up the weight of my line if I want to. So I'm going to start with my gold color right here. So I'm just going to come in and where there's some negative space, I'm going to draw these like carrot shapes that point to the message. And because that looks super plain, I'm going to add in some cute little doodles around it too, just little swirls. I'm going to grab my pink color and just add a few more details with just some extra lines that follow the same contour as these little doodles. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is put a border around my paper. So I'm going to come to my paper layer, create a brand new layer right above it, label this one border. The color of this is going to be this dark blue again, and I'm going to grab my dotted line brush. The size of this dotted line brush is 10%, so I'm going to follow my regular guide and make it more organic looking. So it's a nice cheat where it can look hand on but still follow a grid. So now that I have my border all done, now we need to put in our lines for our checklist. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the very top. This one's just going to be called Today's Date. Okay, I'm going to grab my mono white brush for this and I'm going to change my color to the second medium blue color. The size of my brush is 3%, so I'm just going to write right in these boxes. I'm going to keep my letters contained within them. See, that's pretty good scale wise. I can always reduce it a little bit if I want to, just make sure uniform is selected. Once again, you can use typeable text if you'd rather do that. And then I can just freehand a line right here. If you want it to be super straight, just wait for it to snap. But my whole plan for this is to look really hand drawn. So I don't want super straight lines on any of this. That's just my personal preference. Okay, so now that we have that, now we're going to do all of our lines and check boxes. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and this one's just going to be called lines. And I'm going to draw a few lines, let's see. I think I'm going to skip every other one and we'll see how far I get. I'm going to come inside two of these boxes and then start my line and I can just follow my guide right here. If you would like to accomplish more things in a day, then you can go every line instead of every other one right there. And then I can just add in my own style of checkbox so you can do you know, your own square one. I'm going to do circles just to change it up a little bit and to tie in with my border. So these ones I'm just freehanding, but you can also wait for these ones to snap so they're more of a circle. I've got my check boxes, I've got my lines, my layouts all set. I'm going to toggle these to the left a little bit because I, I don't have much room over here, but I've got quite a bit of space over here. So I just want those to feel a little more centered. So I'm just going to tap them over so it feels a little more even. Now that we have this all set, we're going to group everything together. I have not forgotten about our little string up at the top. We're going to do that later. So drag all these over to the right, hit group. This one's going to be called list. Now we're going to make a duplicate of this. That way if we mess anything up in the next few steps we have, we can always come back to our original and we won't lose all the work that we just did right here. So drag it over to the left, hit duplicate, and we're just going to turn off the visibility of the copy. And now it's just there if we ever need it. Okay, so now that we have our list, we're going to rotate it. I no longer need this grid, so I can turn that off. So come to your wrench and just toggle off drawing guide. And we're going to rotate it. So with your group selected, grab your cursor and rotate it slightly. You don't have to rotate it too much, just whatever is comfortable for you. My rotation is like five and a half percent. It'll tell you up here as you're rotating it. So that's what I've got mine at. And I'm just going to recenter it. You can see I got the crosshairs and now we're good to go. So it's just got a little bit more energy because it's not straight. If you prefer yours be straight, then just leave it the way it was and you can continue on. Just make sure it's centered on your canvas. Okay, now let's take care of the string. I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the top. We'll just label this one string. Here's where some of the more advanced parts of this tutorial come in. So we're going to grab our darkest pink color. I'm going to increase the size of this up to 10% 
and we're going to draw in that string. So you want to make sure it connects to those two dots and then extends to the top. So now we need to make it look like it's going behind the paper right here and then in front of the paper and then behind the paper again. So I'm going to create a layer mask on this. So tap on the layer thumbnail and hit mask. Now we need to toggle open our list group and locate our paper. So first we're going to make a selection of just the paper. So tap on paper and hit select. And now we're going to return to our layer mask up here. We're going to choose black, so double tap where black is. I have my mono weight brush selected, and now this will allow me to have a straight line right here. And I'm only going to paint this far down because now I want it to hit up perfectly with these cutouts. You could freehand this. You don't have to do the selections if you don't want to, but if you want it pixel perfect, this is how to do it. So I've got these ones masked away. Now I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to select the layer mask part instead of the paper so I can get the perfectly crisp edges of the circle. So tap on the layer mask, hit select, come back up to the layer mask that we were painting on. And now I can paint until I hit the top line of the circle and I can be really messy with my strokes because it's going to stop right here because of that selection and I can do the same thing over here and now that is pixel perfect and to deselect just hit your little icon up there and now we've got that nice string going straight through our to-do list. Now it's just time to decorate. So you can add any type of decoration that you'd like around your paper. I'm going to do some decorative foliage elements, but feel free to do whatever you'd like. So we can close up our list layer now, and we're going to create artwork underneath it so it looks like it's behind it. So I'm going to tap on our reserve group and create a new layer right above it so it's directly beneath the list group that we're using. This one's going to be called pink foliage, and I'm going to grab my lightest pink color, which is the second one on the bottom. I'm going to use my mono weight brush for this, but bring it down to a size of 4%. And I'm just going to draw out some stems. They're going to kind of curve upward. That's the style I want to use here. And we're just going to copy this over to the other side. So it'll save us a ton of work if we just do that. Once you have your stems, I'm going to do these really long teardrop shaped leaves. They're a little curvy. If it's hard to see what's going on, just turn off your list group and that can make it a lot easier as you're drawing these elements in. Once you have all of your leaves drawn, we're just going to fill them in with color. Okay, so I like turning the list on so I can get an idea of how things are looking so far and I like how that looks so I'm ready to move forward. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the pink foliage and just label this one detail and I'm going to grab my dark pink color. I still have my mono weight brush selected but I'm going to reduce the size down to 2% and inside these leaves I'm just going to draw some lines up and this will give it an, a sense of depth even though it's a flat element. And we can turn off our list again if it's getting in the way when we're drawing in our details. Okay, once you have all of your details drawn in, now we're going to group our detail with our pink foliage. So just group those together. I'm just going to label this one pink. And now we're just going to duplicate it. So drag it over to the left, hit duplicate. We're going to turn our list back on. And with the duplicated layer, we're going to move it to the left and then we're going to reflect it. So flip it horizontally. And now we can also rotate it a little bit. So it tucks in here in the same way. And I'm just going to scoot it up a little bit. That way it doesn't look like it's super reflected on both sides. So I like how high that one is. I think I'm going to toggle this bottom one down just slightly and rotate it in. I'm making sure that the bottom part doesn't bleed off the bottom. Now we're just going to add in some final details around it. So I'm going to create a brand new layer above the second pink group and we'll label this one gold. And these ones are just some teardrop shapes and I wanted them to look different on both sides, which is why we're not going to reflect them. We're just going to draw them on their own on both sides. So I'm just going to draw in some really simple teardrop shapes just to tie all the colors that we've used together.
Once you have all of your teardrops in, let's create a brand new layer and this one will just be dots. So we're going to grab our lightest blue color for this and we still have our mono white brush selected and the size of this is going to be like 8% and I'm just going to dot here and there. So that's how to create a digital daily to-do list directly in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this tutorial, including the free color palette and all those free brushes are right in the video description, along with a link to my free course, Procreate 5X for Beginners. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.